Hey, Happy New Year, everybody. I managed to sneak in a few more movies at the very end of 2016, and we're gonna go over those today. I know you'll be seeing these movies after 2016 has already ended, but just pretend. So, the first movie we will be talking about is Passengers, directed by Morton Tildum and starring Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. This was a mistake. I really don't know why anyone thought this story would make a good movie, but... Oh. Oh no. This... this was not good at all. And unfortunately, there's really no way to explain why this movie doesn't work without going into spoilers. So, I'm gonna put up the spoiler warning right now, and this is not going away for the rest of the video. So, if you don't want spoilers, the short, short version is, this movie is stupid, don't go see it. So, spoilers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, here we go. Now, according to the trailer, the story is these two people, Jim, played by Chris Pratt, and Aurora, played by Jennifer Lawrence, are on a starship that is headed to some distant world, and they are supposed to be in suspended animation for the entire trip. But by some freak accident, they are woken up about 90 years too soon. They try to make the best of it, and over time they end up falling in love, but at some point, something goes horribly wrong that endangers not only Jim and Aurora, but the other 5,000 plus people on the ship who are still in stasis. But here's the thing. The trailers leave out a very important detail that makes this movie much different than what was advertised, and also much more problematic than what was advertised. And I kind of understand why they did, because if they actually put this in the trailer, I doubt many people would have gone to see the movie. Although, judging by the box office returns, that didn't happen anyway, so I guess they really didn't have anything to lose. But anyway, here's the real story. There is a starship headed to a distant planet, which is called Homestead 2. Was there a Homestead 1? Who knows? Who cares? And it does have about 5,000 passengers on board and suspended animation. But when it goes through an asteroid field, somehow one of the asteroids ends up slipping through the shield and causes a bit of damage. And one of the things that ends up being damaged is the stasis pod that Jim is in. So he wakes up and he goes through the standard post-hibernation procedure that whoever designed this ship has already laid out, but it doesn't take him long to realize that he's the only person awake. And he can't go back to sleep because the pods don't really work that way, and he also can't find any information on the ship that can tell him how to go back to sleep or what to do at this point because all the data in the ship's computers is telling him there's no way anything could possibly fail. Everything on this ship is foolproof and nothing will ever go wrong, ever. And this was something that kind of took me out of the movie. I don't care how well made your stuff is, you are not just going to assume that nothing could ever possibly go wrong and you're not going to have any kind of procedures in place, even in the unlikely event that a stasis pod should fail. Especially when you're dealing with interstellar travel, one would think you would have a failsafe in place for everything. But no, they just assume nothing could ever possibly fail, so they don't plan for anything. Bullshit. Anyway, he is able to send a message back to Earth asking for help. Unfortunately, the message isn't going to get there for another 20 years, and it's going to be another 30 years before he can get a response, so that doesn't do him much good. And the crew are behind a thick, impenetrable locked door, so he can't wake any of them up. So, basically, he's kind of screwed. And at first, he tries to make the most of it. He happens to be a mechanic, which allows him to kind of force or hack his way into some of the nicer sections of the ship that he wouldn't normally have had access to, since he's not one of the first-class passengers. He moves into one of the first-class rooms that is much nicer than the college dorm room he's been assigned. He dines at all the fancy-schmancy restaurants, complete with automated robots that talk like snooty French waiters. And this was another thing that didn't make a whole lot of sense. 
He's able to break into almost every part of the ship except for the flight deck and the cruise quarters, which makes sense. One would think they would have better security. But when he first moves into the first class passenger room, he has to pry it open with a crowbar. But over time, he figures out a way to make it recognize his ID bracelet so he can just scan his way in and out as if it were actually his room. He even figures out how to reprogram some of the robots. However, he cannot find a way to reprogram the machine in the cafeteria that dispenses the food. And because of this, he is stuck eating what looks like some kind of protein paste that I'm sure has all the essential vitamins and nutrients he needs, but probably doesn't taste very good, and just plain black coffee. No cream, no sugar, no nothing. He can bullshit his way into a movie theater, basketball court, swimming pool, and even some kind of hologrammatic version of Dance Central that they have on board, but he can't figure out how to make the machine in the cafeteria give him a fucking latte? Really? But anyway, throughout all of this, I kept wondering, where is Jennifer Lawrence? Because when the asteroid hit, only Jim's pod was affected. No one else on the ship woke up. Obviously, she's still somewhere on the ship, but I can only assume she's still asleep. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh, is that where they're going? Well, this is about to get awkward. If they're going in the direction I think they're going in. And sure enough, they do. At first, Jim is having a ton of fun having a starship all to himself, and even spends a good chunk of the movie walking around without pants, because why put on pants? No one else around, no need. But over time, he becomes lonely and depressed, and even comes this close to throwing himself out the airlock. But then one day, he just happens to stumble across Aurora's sleeping pod, and he thinks she's kinda hot. And I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that this sleeping beauty's name is Aurora. Not subtle. So he looks up her information, because again, he can hack into any part of the ship except that goddamn coffee machine. He finds out she's a writer, he reads some of her work, and over time he falls in love with her in typical stalkery fashion. And you can probably guess where this is going. He's debating whether or not he should sabotage her stasis pod and wake her up. On the one hand, if he does wake her up, he'll at least have another human being to talk to for the first time in over a year. But on the other hand, he would basically be committing murder. He asks the android bartender Arthur, who is played by Michael Sheen and was kind of awesome, but he's no help because, as he puts it, these are not android questions. Eventually, his loneliness gets the best of him, and he wakes her up, and of course he lies and says her pod malfunctioned just like his. And over time, the two become romantically involved. Now, here's the problem. Their romance plays out pretty much like a rom-com, and while Jennifer Lawrence and Chris Pratt do work quite well together, at no point during their romance, which goes on for several months, does Jim show any sign of remorse whatsoever. And the movie portrays their romance as being very charming and sweet, in spite of the fact that there's this big shadow hanging over the whole thing that's, you know, murder. And it's not until Aurora eventually figures out what he did that he finally becomes remorseful and apologetic, and I was not buying it. Like, motherfucker, please. You are not sorry for what you did. You're sorry you got caught. Now, at this point, even though the story is a bit... Ugh, there are at least a few different directions they could have gone that would have kept things interesting. They could have had... Aurora push Jim away, and over time he starts to become more obsessed with her and really creepy and stalkerish, and where the hell is Aurora gonna go to get away from him because they're trapped on this ship in the middle of deep space? Where can she possibly run to? And then it kind of turns into a horror movie. Or if you want to inject a bit of drama, maybe Aurora suddenly finds herself pregnant. Oh shit, what now? But instead, the story just kind of goes off on a tangent, and the whole Jim is a murderer angle is all but forgotten. Suddenly, one of the crew members, played by Lawrence Fishburne, is also woken up from stasis because his pod malfunctions, not because someone wakes him up, 
and he realizes the ship has taken significant damage and systems are failing left and right and they need to do significant repairs pronto if the 5,000 plus people on board are going to make it to Homestead 2. Of course, this leads to a heroic and pretty cliched moment for Jim where he bravely saves the day and Aurora falls in love with him all over again and she takes him back and they live happily ever after the end. Really. And the amazing thing is, after they save the ship, they actually present Aurora with a way to go back into stasis. Because they have this machine on board in the medical wing called an autodoc, which is basically your all-purpose automated surgery machine, and among other procedures, it can put someone into suspended animation. The problem is, there's only one autodoc on the ship. For 5,000 people. Add that to the list of things that doesn't make sense. But instead, she chooses not to go to sleep and spends the rest of her days with her murderer. Fuck right off. If there were any consequences at all for Jim, they might have been able to salvage this story. But instead, he ends up with exactly what he wanted. He gets to spend the rest of his life with a woman of his dreams. Eat my ass. From a technical standpoint, the movie looks pretty good, it's shot well, it's acted well, the music sounds okay, but really, who cares? This story is fucking stupid. Do not give the people who made this movie your money. They do not deserve it. This movie is bad, and they should feel bad. And that's all I got to say about Passengers. Till next time, take care.